What's up gamers? So I know it is a little bit late to be talking about Transformers Rise of the Beast, which is a movie that came out seven months ago and like barely anyone even saw. For anyone familiar with this channel, I love Transformers, okay? Maybe, maybe a little bit too much. Absolutely a little bit too much. <laughs> so my hype levels for this movie were out of control up until like the lead up to its release. And it was like such a fucking quest to actually go see this movie on time because for some reason they delayed it in Australia till like the end of June. So I organized with a friend to go interstate to see it earlier because they were playing it like on the actual worldwide release date there, just not in my home state for some reason. And then another one of my friends invited me to the Australian premiere even earlier than that in Sydney. So I went to two different states in Australia just to see this movie on time. And then when I finally got home, I went to go see it again with my friends on the 22nd. And I watched it again with my brother. And then I watched it again for this video. So I have seen Rise of the Beast five times. I just, I, I really want to talk about it, okay? <laughs> I'm probably not going to be saying anything groundbreaking that you haven't already heard if you've watched a bunch of videos about this movie. Like, my friend Paper Plane did a three-hour review about it that I really recommend you go and check out because he goes, like, a lot more into the behind-the-scenes stuff than I'm about to. And I'm basically just here to, like, repeat everything he says, but not as funny, so... Uh... Come. And I liked it a lot, but I think a lot of the problems I have with Rise of the Beast aren't with the actual movie, but with what I wanted it to be instead. And to explain what I mean by that, Let's talk about the Bumblebee movie. I am coming. Bumblebee is one of my favorite movies ever made because it has done everything I always wanted a Transformers film to do. Unlike the other five Transformers movies that were done by Michael Bay, this one was done by Travis Knight, the same director of Kubo and the Two Strings. And it was just like such a much needed breath of fresh air after everyone was so done with The Last Knight. Now, I know everyone is very opinionated about the Michael Bay Transformers movies. I love the first one, okay? Even when it's like being super horny and weird, I think overall it just does such a great job at like modernizing the concept of Transformers and adapting it to the big screen. It was after that that everything went to hell. For like an entire decade after, the Transformers movies were just content with like being shitty action movies that made a lot of money, and they never tried to be anything more than that. Bumblebee was the first time I wasn't embarrassed to like Transformers publicly. It actually tries to be a real movie, you know? It's funny, it's sweet, it's got actual characters, like Charlie and Bumblebee are so good and such a massive step up from fucking Mark Wahlberg, John Cena, there's a part where Bumblebee's penis falls out, and I actually felt something while watching it, other than like a oh, deep sense good. of hatred and boredom. Like, whereas every other Transformers movie has been this like large scale war story with an enormous cast, for Bumblebee to have such a stripped back approach and focusing on just like a single Autobot going up against two Decepticons with Haley Steinfeld and John Cena chucked in there, it almost feels like an accident after Rise of the Beasts. And yeah, it was nice that everyone looked like the cartoon now, but that wasn't the problem with the Michael Bay ones. The reason I loved Bumblebee so much was not just because of the actual movie, but also the future that it promised, you know? It was a Transformers movie made by people who were actually trying, with real characters and action that isn't impossible to follow, and without any of the robots humping Megan Fox. And look, Rise of the Beasts is a fine movie on its own. I really like it by itself, but it just doesn't live up to that new direction that I was hoping this franchise would go in because it goes right back to doing everything that the other Transformers movies do instead of doing what made Bumblebee stand out so much. It's another freaking globetrotting adventure for a MacGuffin device with way too many characters that don't have enough time to do anything. Rise of the Beasts is notable because it's the theatrical debut of the Maximals from the original Beast Wars cartoon, which for those who don't know, was a show that's basically the exact same thing as Transformers, except they turn into animals this time. Rise of the Beast tries to be a Bumblebee sequel, a Beast Wars movie, the first movie in a new trilogy, and a billion dollar blockbuster all at the same time. So the way the plot of this movie goes, so at the beginning of the movie we meet the Maximals and they are fighting the, the Terracons, who are led by a hot man named Scourge, who work for a guy called Unicron who can eat planets, and he really wants this thing that the Maximals have called the Transwarp Key that will allow them to open a rift in space so he can go around and eat more planets. And everyone really wants this transwarp key, okay? And don't worry, because they're gonna remind you about it every five minutes. The transwarp key. Get the key. The key. The key. The key. So the Maximals flee that planet, and they go to Earth. And then I think we cut to, like, millions of years in the future or something. It's really not very clearly explained. And we meet this girl named Elena, who finds a bird statue that turns out to be one half of the transwarp key. And that opens, like, a big beacon in the sky that the Autobots see, and they're like, oh shit, that's the transwarp key that can get us home to Cybertron. So y'all 
robots that transform into cars, even though you're from way out in space. But now there's this key that opens a portal back to your home. You say that like it's weird. It's super weird. Noah Diaz is this guy who has a brother who is 11, but he's sick because his, he has hands. <laughs> and after he gets rejected for one job interview, he immediately turns to crime and breaks into a garage and steals a car that turns out to be Pete Davidson. And they make a deal that Noah has to break into the museum to steal the key, and that's where he meets Elena. So they go to the museum, but then the Terracons show up and beat the fucking shit out of all of them, and then Scourge kills Bumblebee. But it's okay because they meet a giant bird named Air Razor who tells them that they only have one half of the key, and the other half is in Peru. So then they all fuck off to Peru, and that's where they meet the other Maximals, and they fight the Terracons, who then end up getting the other half of the key as well, because these guys fucking suck at everything. And at the end, everyone is like, damn, there's nothing we can do. And then Prime goes like, nah. And then Prime was like, yeah, okay, cool. Here's this plan I came up with, actually. So then they fight, like, an army of scorpions and bionicle-looking dudes until Unicron shows up, and then Bumblebee comes back to life, and they kill everyone, and they win, and the movie ends, and also G.I. Joe is there. I think that's a pretty perfect summation of the entire plot of the movie with absolutely no important details left out whatsoever. Relax, relax, and let me explain. It belongs to, to these giant robots from space. Before I spend like the next 30 minutes complaining about this movie, I just want to get out of the way. There is a lot to like about it, okay? I actually really like it. I want to make that very clear. <laughs> There's so much style in the first half of this movie, like especially when that, that whole sequence where like Noah meets Mirage uh, for the first time and they have like a car chase through New York where Mirage murders like 12 cops. Whoever did the fight choreography just absolutely crushed it. Like it is amazing how easy it is to tell what is happening in this on like 90% of the Bay movies. And like I'll talk about the good stuff as I go on through this video, but like the thing you have to understand really early on about Rise of the Beast is that it does not want to be Bumblebee 2. Now, I understand why they would sort of change course again, because 95% of people watching don't care about Bumblebee. It has been five years since that movie, and it didn't even make all that much money anyway. So I understand why they would want to go back to doing what used to work. The way that Bumblebee ends is that Optimus Prime lands on Earth and joins Bumblebee and is like, dude, thank you so much for killing those two Decepticons. We're going to hide out here for a little while until we can regroup and go back to Cybertron. And one of the last shots in the movie is seeing seven pods in the sky that are about to land on Earth. But aside from Optimus and Bumblebee in Rise of the Beast, there are only four other Autobots. Did the other three fucking die on impact? Are they okay? Now, to its credit, Rise of the Beast does run with that setup from Bumblebee. Like, that's the main objective for the entire premise of the movie, is that Optimus Prime really wants to go home. After seven long years stranded on Earth, we finally found a way home. But aside from that, there is one single reference to Bumblebee, and it is this one line that Optimus says to Bumblebee in, like, early in the movie. We should not be relying on a human. They are my friends. I know one was good to you, B, but this is not- And, like, in terms of Bumblebee as a character, the only things that Bumblebee does in Rise of the Beast is show up for a bit at the beginning, fucking die, and then come back to life at the end for no reason so all of the eight-year-olds in the cinema can clap. And that's me, by the way. I'm one of those eight-year-olds. To make room for the 80 characters in this movie, they kill off Bumblebee, who died is like 40 minutes in. This cannot be. But yeah, I legit thought he actually died until they start talking about like, oh, could we revive him with Energon? That was the exact moment when I was like, oh yeah, okay, he's fine. Do you think an Energon infusion could bring him back? <laughs> yeah, boy. Rise of the Beast learned nothing from Bumblebee. That movie is a grounded story focusing on one single Autobot coming to Earth and bonding with a human. It is a cute, small-scale story. It's so simple, and that's why it works so well. So for the sequel, we're going to throw in the Maximals and Unicron and the Terracons and the Transwarp Key. What drives me absolutely insane is that Bumblebee does not commit to being a prequel or a reboot. It actually kind of works almost perfectly as both. Obviously, originally, Bumblebee was supposed to be a prequel before everyone shot on the last night and no one saw it. And that's what made them change it into sort of being a reboot, but not really. Like, that's why Bumblebee still talks to the radio, like in the Bay movies. That's why, like, Megatron isn't in the Cybertron scene at the beginning because he's meant to be frozen on Earth at the time. It, it still doesn't make too much sense if you think about it. Like, Optimus Prime lands on Earth in the 07 movie, and then he lands on Earth again, so did, like, he leave and then come back, or uh, what? But I am happy to announce that five years later, we have still not gotten any closer to resolving this debate, because Rise of the Beast still will not commit to one way or the other. They, they are so careful not to fuck with the story of the Michael Bay movies, which is why it takes place in 1994. They say the transwarp key sky beacon thing can't be seen by humans, that's like a major plot point in the movie, and that's also why the final battle takes place in the Baron 
barren wasteland instead of a city so that no humans can get involved before they're supposed to. But then despite all of that, it literally has to be a reboot because they fight Unicron, who was the Earth in The Last Night. So was Unicron trying to eat himself? Did he forget? Transformers has a cast problem, okay? The biggest problem with the fact that it needs to sell millions of dollars worth of toys and have like two trillion characters is that most Transformers stories are overloaded with characters that have absolutely nothing to do. Narratively, do there really need to be three separate inset guys? Absolutely not. It's just cooler that way. The original Transformers cartoon got around this by rotating the cast a lot. You know, there were like random episodes that would focus on different Autobots while the other ones like fucked off somewhere and just conveniently weren't ever around to help. Uh, Beast Wars got around this by just killing off everyone they didn't need anymore. Even the first Michael Wayne movie limited itself to just five Autobots. And I'm not saying they all had a lot to do, but you know, you knew enough about each of them for it to kind of work, okay? The Decepticons were still just kind of there to die, but that's not important. And it got a bit more muddled in the sequels when they added like five million characters but Rise of the Beast has five Autobots, four Maximals, two humans, three Terracons, and Unicron. And out of all of those, only like three of them are actually characters. In this movie, aside from Optimus and Bumblebee, you've also got Mirage, Wheeljack, and RC. The standout for sure though, and one of the best parts of the whole movie was Mirage. And that's because he takes up pretty much everyone else's screen time. Like they give a ton of time to him and like developing his relationship with Noah. We just work friends. <laughs> work friends? You've been inside me. He's the new hip with the kids sort of character. And, you know, initially I thought he was going to be really fucking annoying, but I actually kind of really loved him by the end of the movie. I guess it does look better on me. Just don't ask what part of my body it came from. <laughs> Everybody else does literally fuck all. RC has like little tiny bits of character in there. You can see her trying so hard to like break out and actually have something to do. Oh, well, he is a plane. Literally the only thing that RC does in the entire movie is like dump exposition and make holograms of shit. And that's still somehow more than Wheeljack does. Mm, a little racist, Hermano. I'm not trying to be, you know, yo. The only reason I even remember that Wheeljack is even in the movie is because of stuff that happened before it came out. Like, I don't know if anyone remembers, but there was like an enormous fuss made over how terrible his design was. And yeah, I still think it sucks, but I'm gonna buy the toy anyway, so I don't really think it matters what I think. But everyone got really mad because uh, Wheeljack looks like this in the Bumblebee movie, you know? He actually looks like Wheeljack. And in hindsight, I just think it's really funny that there was so much fuss caused over a character that is like in the movie for like three minutes maybe. And again, it's totally fine for Transformers to be redesigned. I'm completely fine with that. But it's just like in the sequel to the Bumblebee movie, I don't think it's too much to ask that the characters look like how they did, you know, one movie prior to that. There's too many of them. Such tranquility. And then there's Stratosphere who literally appears out of nowhere halfway through the movie. And his only purpose is to get them from New York to Peru. The dude doesn't even help out in the final battle. Like literally fuck you, man. On the bright side though, I really love the human characters in this movie. I think Noah is a much stronger character than Elena, but they both, they give them like both a lot to do in the movie. Like normally in the Michael Bay movies, I'm like, I just do not care about the humans. Like I don't give a shit. Please stop putting them on screen. I don't care. I really like the way they like worked them into the plot and gave them enough to do and actually had them like involved in the action in the final battle. Like a uh, Mirage births an exosuit for Noah to use so he can fight Scourge along with Optimus, which is like so much cooler than Mark Wahlberg standing there and shooting a gun at lockdown a little bit. The thing that guts me though, and I really hate to say this, Unicron is kind of really lame in this movie. I know this is meant to be like the beginning of a new trilogy, so I'm sure he's gonna have like a lot more to do later, but as it is in Rise of the Beast, he is just kind of there. It has like the same problem as the DC movies where they just want to like skip ahead all the way to the good part instead of like doing any of the build up to get there. They just want to be like, yeah, let's do Unicron right now. Who, who's Megatron? Fuck that guy. I've always kind of seen him as like the final boss of Transformers, you know? He's like the bad guy in the third movie of a trilogy kind of deal, you know? And I'm fine for them to like do something different and start with him, but like, man, Megatron is going to look so lame in comparison if they do eventually get to doing him, you know? Anyway, the point is that there are just way too many fucking characters in this movie and they like sacrifice telling a good story over selling a bunch of toys and making a lot of money. Which, I mean, no shit, but you know, I still feel like I have to complain about it. So I shit you not right, when I walked out of the cinema for Rise of the Beast, uh, cause again, I went to the Australian premiere of it. So they had some like Hasbro reps there. The very first thing that one of them said to me was, did we do the Maximals justice? What? 
<laughs> what do you mean? Uh, I wrote down on the form that they did a great job. I love Beast Wars so much. It is one of my favorite Transformers shows for sure, alongside literally all of the other ones. Uh, it's only because I love it so much that I'm about to complain about the Maximals as much as I'm going to, okay? I need you to understand that it all comes from a place of love. The Maximals fucking suck in this movie. Beast Wars, I think, is one of the hardest Transformers things to adapt because in that original cartoon, it was such an incredibly specific scenario they were in that let them perfectly explain this dumbass premise. Beast Wars takes place on a prehistoric Earth where there are no humans. They don't have to hide from anyone or have anyone worry about a giant fucking purple T-Rex and a half wolf, half bird monster and a giant crab and a surfboarding monkey. Like, okay, they've immediately gotten that problem out of the way. Then also they explain that there is Energon radiation all over the planet and that they have to stay in beast mode all the time otherwise it'll kill them none of this is in rise of the beast so when you strip away so much of what made the beast wars premise work it makes the maximals look really lame like in this movie you have all the autobots doing all this cool shit in peru and then they also have a giant fucking bird with them <laughs> like look at the shot at the end of the movie where they have a bunch of giant robots with a robot rhino and gorilla standing ne next to them it's so fucking silly that i kind of love it like there is no reason why any of the maximals turn into animals. They sure as hell aren't disguising themselves as anything primal. You're a giant fucking gorilla. And the Maximals are also kind of meant to be from the future, but it's cut down so much in the final film that it literally makes no sense. Like, Eraser says some shit about them being from the past and the future. I am a Maximal, a warrior from both your past and future. Oh, right. That, that tracks. And Optimus Primal says that he's named after Optimus Prime. That is, that is pretty much it. Optimus Primal? Named after you the legendary warrior of Cybertron. In Rise of the Beast, the Maximals don't show up until an hour into the movie. Cheetor says maybe two lines in the whole film. Rhinox literally does not talk at any point. Like if you cut the Maximals out of this movie, I really don't think all that much would change. Like they are just there to sell toys and maybe be a hook to get people to go and see a seventh Transformers movie. Sorry about scaring you, brother. Scared? <laughs> Please, I'm not scared. That's just engine oil. Huh. I didn't watch any of the trailers before this movie came out because I wanted to leave as much of a surprise as possible. So I genuinely did not know if they were going to transform at any point in the movie. Like I was fully prepared for them to just be like a big monkey for the whole movie, but they do actually maximize at the end. Rhinox! Cheetor, maximize! Even if it makes absolutely no sense as to why, like, Primal would not have transformed up until this point, maybe that would have helped you fight Air Razor or Scourge that one time, you fucking idiot. Like, obviously, they really wanted to save it as, like, a big reveal at the end so they could do that thing that they do in the show. But when they do finally transform, you could barely even see them. One of the coolest parts of the Beast Wars designs in the original show is that they all look like a robot hiding underneath an animal. Like, they all have this consistent theme of, like, robot parts that are a different kind color to the rest of the animals so it makes it look like they stand out a lot but in rise of the beast all of the maximals have like this flat ass monochrome look and it's just so like Look, I'm just so mad that this wasn't just a Beast Wars movie, okay? Like, obviously they need Optimus Prime and Bumblebee in there to market it. A regular Beast Wars movie on its own would probably make, like, zero dollars. But the reason that Beast Wars was so successful in the first place was because it tried its own thing. It wasn't just, like, Transformers again. Like, it was a completely brand new thing. And yet it used the original cartoon as a base, and it was sick to have, like, references to it every now and then. But it was because Beast Wars was so different and fresh that I think that's what made it stand out in the first place. And I think that could have worked in a movie movie as well if they had actually given it the time it deserved instead of just like awkwardly merging it into what was supposed to be a Bumblebee sequel. I enjoy that look of confusion when an inferior being meets a higher power. <laughs> Rise of the Beast is the first Transformers movie without any Decepticons in it at all. Literally, where the fuck is Megatron? Is he okay? When they first revealed the toys of, uh, I think it was Battle Trap here, I remember I made a tweet saying, wow, this design's like fucking awesome. I can't wait for them to kill them off in two seconds. So guess what actually ended up happening? Someone give me a real fight! I am on my hands and knees begging just one of the Transformers movies to give a shit about the villains. I swear to God. Except Bumblebee, of course. You're perfect. I love you so much. Shadow and Dropkick are not the greatest villains of all time, but God damn it, they were on screen for more than five seconds and I can tell you stuff about them. Shadow was hot and Dropkick wanted to kill everything he sees. And that's all I needed. That is good enough. They're not on screen a lot, but way more than the Terracons are who just have like evil monologues to set up what happens next and that is it. I could not tell you one single thing of value that Nightbird or Battletrap do in the entire movie. 
movie. Uh, aside from look cool, of course. They're really good at doing that. Literally, Unicron's entire thing is kidnapping people and turning them into his slaves. And I, I feel like they could have, like, done something with that. <laughs> I remember there was this really stupid rumor that was going around on Twitter before the movie came out that people were thinking, because uh, there was, like, time travel involved, that Scourge was going to be a time-displaced Bayverse Optimus Prime, and that's, like, why he was wearing a mask and that was going to come off at the end of the movie. It's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard in my life, but it would have been something. On sportsmanlike conduct on the Terracon. Oh, come on, ref! And so, of course, in spite of the movie setting them up as being, like, way stronger than everyone else, they still all die immediately by the time we get to the final battle. That's, like, always standard for Transformers movies is that everyone is made out of, like, tissue paper and dies in three seconds. I know a lot of people have problems with the final battle, and I can understand why, okay? It's set in a barren wasteland, and they fight, like, an army of infinite generic drones, which is really lame because... Okay, look, they set up the Terracons to be way stronger than the Autobots throughout the entire movie. That was the entire point of having an extended fight scene of Prime getting absolutely washed to basically just tell us that Scourge is really strong and really cool. But then at the end, instead of having the Maximals and Autobots team up to then be strong enough to beat them, Optimus takes on Scourge alone, but he wins this time because he's like trying a bit harder, I guess. Like, I get they had too many characters to fight three bad guys, but like, come on, man. Master, the reinforcements. And dude, you know what? I don't care if the rest of the final battle is dumb as shit. When I was watching RC riding on a giant rhino fighting a bunch of Bionicles, that shit just brought me right back to playing with all my toys in my room like two days ago. And like it so is just like a kid playing with a bunch of toys where like none of this shit makes any sense together at all but you just don't care because I'm having a great time. So I'm not saying that it wasn't awesome, okay? Because it is. But it's here that I want to segue into talking about maybe my biggest problem with the movie and that's Optimus Prime. I've had enough. Time to show you the real power of the Prime. Mom, I want to go home. I'm scared. I've got to talk about Optimus in this movie because he is so weird. I have to be holding the character I'm talking about. It's very important to my immersion. My biggest problem with Rise of the Beast is that they turn Optimus back into the same murderous, terrifying guy that he was in the Michael Bay movies. He is not the Optimus Prime I imagined. I don't care that they made Optimus Prime racist. The humans will always protect what is theirs. We can only trust our own kind. Uh, I'm not even kidding, that is like genuinely his arc in the movie, and it's kind of hilarious. At least Mirage is one of us. So like, ever since the Bumblebee movie, right, they've been stuck on Earth for like seven years or something, and Optimus has become like really bitter and grumpy that he hasn't been able to find a way off the planet. And I actually kind of like the moral dilemma they give Optimus in this movie, that he has to like choose to save this new planet over his home and all the Autobots relying on him. I think that's a really cool idea. I don't understand how that like translates into him hating humans, like it's not our fault, dude, that your fucking pods explode on impact, but whatever. Like, I legitimately feel offended that this Optimus Prime would hate me personally. I should have known better than to rely on humans. Well, you blaming me? Because of you, Unicron will now use the key to consume yeah. every planet. Prime and Noah, like, fucking hate each other for most of the movie because Noah really wants to destroy the transwarp key before Unicron can get a hold of it. And there's this really funny scene where they're, like, going to Peru where he's talking about it to Elena within the earshot of the Autobots, like a fucking legend. You really think this key thing is in Peru? I think so. No, if it is, we get our hands on it, and we gotta destroy it. Prime's arc in the movie is that at the end, he realizes that Noah was right the whole time and has to, like, sacrifice their way home by destroying the transwarp key in order to stop Unicron and save all these dumbass humans. Now, in the original ending of the movie, this was meant to lead with him getting, like, sucked into space and getting trapped with Unicron, which makes a lot more sense than what happens in the final movie where he, like, he blows up the key and then he just, he's, like, fine. <laughs> I kind of love how the plot of this movie could have been over in five minutes if everyone had just listened to Noah, but, like, Optimus was like, nah. We have to destroy it. <laughs> One of the things I was looking forward to the most with this change in direction after Bumblebee was them changing the characterization of Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime, to me, should not be fucking tearing a guy's face off and <laughs> saying, give me your face. Like, he's so scary in those movies. And we didn't see a lot of Prime in the Bumblebee movie, but from what we did, it looked like he was a much more familiar version of the character where he's a little bit kinder, you know? And I'm not getting into an argument with 12-year-olds in the comment section over how ethical him executing Sentinel Prime in Dark of the Moon was, okay? But as long as we're all aware, there is a clear difference between this and, and this, okay? So in Rise of the Beast, when Optimus Prime spends the entire movie talking about how much he wants to fucking murder Scourge. I'm going to take back Scourge's key and then take off his head. I was a bit worried that we were kind of just doing the same thing all over again. I will end you, Scourge. I can think of no better place to bury you. And I kind of thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool if they did go the direction of Scourge being an unwilling
unwilling servant, would it not work better for Optimus's character to have to overcome his desire for revenge? But no, you're right. It's so much cooler that he just like tears his fucking head off instead. Like seriously, I understand how like Superman fans feel about Man of Steel now, you know? I know Optimus Prime has never been the nicest character, okay? I watched G1 for the first time like last year, and even in that, he's like surprisingly a bit of an asshole sometimes. Give me your rocket pack. My rocket pack? Now! And I have no problem with Optimus Prime killing anyone. I just- him tearing Scourge's fucking head off is so unnecessarily violent. Again, is it cool? Absolutely. But that should not come from Optimus Prime. No, Optimus! Now here's the thing, okay? None of us are smarter than the people that worked on this movie, okay? I was so sure that they had thought of all of this shit when they were writing the movie, but the thing that hurts the most is to know that they actually did and then cut them out anyway. Rise of the Beast has so many deleted scenes that we know about that would have addressed and fixed most of these problems, and it drives me absolutely insane that they removed them in the final cut and created so many problems when they had already addressed them and had thought of that when they were writing the movie, okay? There's the famous transit scene, right? Which was meant to be the the original opening of the film where Optimus Prime fights a Decepticon assassin who's like sent down from Earth to like fucking murder him and stop him from getting off the planet. It continues on from the story of Bumblebee, you know, it addresses what the Decepticons have been up to. I'm sure they are probably wondering where the fuck Optimus Prime went. So the fact that they'd be like hunting him across the galaxy is really cool. I love that. But apparently the reason they cut it is because test audiences are a bunch of fucking pussies. Uh, RC and Wheeljack as well, the reason that they have absolutely nothing to do with value in the movie is because they cut out this like romance subplot between the two of them and like I'm kind of on the fence about that one because I'm, I'm sort of half glad they cut that because that would have been really weird because I mean you know it should have been me not him but at least they would have had something to do in the film. At the end, they were meant to use Air Razor Spark as a bomb to blow up the Transwarp Key, which I think would have been a much better use of her, like, dying for no reason. They had more Beast Wars stuff in there as well, and more explicit references to Bumblebee, and it just annoys me so much that every single thing I hear that was cut out of this movie would have improved it massively. Yeah, so anyway, I, I'm sure I haven't said anything that, like, other people haven't talked about, but I really like Rise of the Beast. I think it's great, okay? It just somehow feels like a step in the right direction, and then also a step backwards at the same time. Uh, but... No one saw it, and it barely made any money, uh, so I'm not quite sure where we're going from here. I mean, we got we got Transformers 1 coming out this year, and I am like 100% sure that it's not going to make any money, but I am very excited for it. Uh, so I guess I'll see you like seven months after that movie comes out to talk about it uh, then, when everyone else has uh, stopped caring about it. So <laughs> thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.